buttery, flaky French pastries in San Francisco. The crunchy plus the sugar. It was love at first bite. Gigante crispy fish tacos in Oakland. It had like a perfect sear on the outside. And a gooey, cheesy wine country starter that's strictly for those in the know. I wish I'd ordered two of them because <laughs> that was absolutely outstanding. You gotta try this. Check Please You Gotta Try This is made possible by the members of KQED and by the following sponsors whom we gratefully acknowledge for their steadfast support during these uncertain times. It's our food rescue program that feeds people, not landfills. It's a thousand things, big and small. Sutter Health. Total Wine & More, offering more than 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and over 4,000 spirits. Total Wine & More, now with nine Bay Area locations. TotalWine.com. The Bay Area Airport that's close and reliable. iFlyOAK.com. Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check Please Bay Area's new spin-off, You Gotta Try This. We have three guests. Each one recommends the one dish they can't get enough of, and the other two go check them out to see what they think. Along the way, we take a deep dive into the stories behind the dishes, learning the special ingredients and techniques that make them so delicious. Joining me virtually at the Check Please table today are social media strategist Faith Chihill, Diversity and Equity Director Chip McNeil, and Law Professor Rachel Brockle. Hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi. All right. You have to be an early bird to grab Faith's favorite dish. It's the Queen oh. Amon, a sweet French pastry from a bakery Bon Appetit magazine once crowned the bakery of the year. In San Francisco, it's Arsicol. <laughs> The bakery is called Arsico, that's the last name of my great-grandparents. They owned a bakery in France a hundred years ago. And there are two bakeries in that street, and the one that used to be my great-grandparents is still the better one. So it's a very important name for us, it's something I want to, uh, to take care of. And uh, I made the jump six years ago and uh, opened the bakery. We were extremely lucky that Bon Appetit magazine decided we were the best new bakery in America in 2016. And uh, my life changed uh, from that day on. My grandparents used to take us to La Bourne. It's in Brittany. And that's where, when I was 13, for the first time, I discovered that thing called the Queen Emma. And you know, right away I could tell this caramel is sweet and buttery. I tried one and it was uh, quite a revelation. The Queen Amman, it's in the, the dialect of Brittany. Uh, it means butter cake. Originally, a baker had some leftover bread dough. I said, well, you know, let me see what I can do by adding some butter and some sugar. And the Queen Amman was born. Today what we do is we use our croissant dough and our croissant dough you know, has a reputation of being very flaky and it is because we give the dough an extra turn. So we have three times as many layers. So we roll out the dough. We spread some butter, melted butter. Then we add some sugar. We roll it. We cut slices, we take them, we dip them in butter and then sugar again, and put that in the mold, which of course has been, you know, brushed with butter. I'm very preoccupied with uh, caramelization versus crystallization. So the baking process is very important, getting the right temperature, getting the right balance between sugar and butter. I can tell people, oh, this is a very balanced pastry. There's a lot of sugar, but you know, it's balanced with a lot of butter. So, you know, I think the best way to eat the Queen of Man is make sure nobody's watching and, you know, go for it. No shame. A little messy, yes, but, you know, we, uh, we, we don't apologize too much. So, Faith, 
how did you find this absolutely delectable pastry? Oh my gosh. I am having trouble thinking of a time I did not know or have this pastry in my life, but really I had heard about it from a coworker who had been raving about the croissants at this place. She said it was the best that she'd ever tried outside of France and she is French. So I trusted her advice very much. So I went in and the croissant looked good, but then I'd seen the Queen Amon and I was so excited to try it. And it was love at first bite, just like the fluffy plus the crunchy plus the sugar, just all my favorite textures and flavors in one dish. And how do you eat it? It's hard to eat very daintily because of so many of the layers and the flakiness. Mm -hmm. The other day I was trying to sneakily eat one in the car and it was not a great look Um, because it's in a swirl pattern. I kind of like to pick a little bit of a spiral and try to savor it that way. But otherwise, just a big old chomp. (laughs) <laughs> well, I saw Chip laughing and, and shaking his head. Did you enjoy the Queen Amon? Uh, I did. How did you eat it? I am a flaker. I like to flake it off and just see the beautiful layers sort of fall away and just look at the delicateness of it. And it just, you're amazed at how they make this wonderful flakiness happen. It, it also makes it last longer. <laughs> A hundred percent. Right. So Rachel, tell us about your experience. So I initially started biting into it and I thought, oh, this is just like a croissant, right? But I went a little further and realized not only is there caramelized croissant dough in there, but the center was a little more dense. So I kind of coined a little term for it and kind of called it a dosant, like a mix between a donut (laughs) and a croissant. So, you know, it wasn't too overpoweringly sweet. So I thought it was good. It was really interesting because when I walked in, they had this beautiful case, very clear glass case laid in front of you. And the very first pastry was the Queen of Mon. They know what their specialties are. And I'll tell you, I was so captivated by its golden crispiness. I don't think I even noticed anything else. (laughs) (laughs) So it just kind of called my name. And in terms of getting anything else, Rachel, did you indulge? Or- oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> we, we did not mess around. We <laughs> did get, um, it was an onion and bacon quiche, which was excellent. And do you have another favorite faith? Yes. I mean, of course, the regular croissants is what made them famous. You know, I particularly love the almond croissant. I think that they do. I think it's frangipani at the bottom. That's just like, it's so tasty. They also have a morning bun. Sometimes, you know, if it was going to be a particularly rough week, I would grab some pastries and then some like little cookies to share with my coworkers. Well, you're very nice because I don't know that I would share them. So yeah. you're very nice. <laughs> And I think for me, my stomping ground is usually the Arguello location off of Clement. And I think parking is usually the biggest factor. Mm -hmm. But then once you find it, the lines aren't too bad if you're there before noon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I went to the McAllister location and uh, we didn't have a line. Luckily, we got there about mid-morning and I actually got to meet Armando and he was very excited to share with us how they cook everything, what's in the ingredients. And so I was very impressed on his hospitality there as well. All right. You'll find the Queen Amon and more at Arsicole, which has two locations in San Francisco. The original is on Arguello Street and the newest cafe is on McAllister Street. Faith's pro tip, grab a few croissants for the road too. I have to say that Chip's dish takes the prize for the most fun to say out loud. Ready for this? It's the grilled pescado taco done crispy calaca loca a special style at Oakland's La Calaca Loca Taqueria. To me, food, it tastes wonderful, but it should be fun. Salute. Laka Laka Loka refers to the Day of the Dead. Kalaka is a skeleton, a loka crazy, so it was a tongue twister in Mexico City, really. And, and it, I couldn't even pronounce it in the beginning, but it sounded like fun. Because it's the Day of the Dead, it's also remembering family and friends that have passed. But instead of mourning them, this is a celebration. Real Pascal Taco Especial is very unique to La Calaca Loca Taqueria only. It starts with two tortillas. One of them that is fried on the griddle and we wrap it with the second tortilla that's soft with cabbage, onion, cilantro, pico de gallo, 
great fish, Mai Mai. It's sustainable, it's line caught, environmental friendly. Gabriel has been cutting mahi for 15 years at least here, and he has a feeling of what he's cutting. Now he's gonna cut about a two ounce portion. Uh, we did the fish in quite a few spices, a black pepper, garlic granulated, light chili powder, dark chili powder, kosher salt, lime juice, and olive oil. All the spices combination makes the taste feel very zesty, a lot of flavor. To make our tomatillo sauce, first we start with grilling the tomatillo, the onions, the garlic, and then we blend it all together with spices, salt, and pepper. The secret to our amazing guacamole is you have to start with the freshest avocados, onion, cilantro, lime juice, salt and pepper, cumin seed. That tastes awesome. You gotta try it. All right, Chip, this place, La Calaca Loca, really the ambiance is something special to start with. Right, this, this place is actually a wonderful, fun place to visit because when you walk into it, it's like walking into a, a restaurant that's in the heart of Mexico. It reminds me of the colors you might see in Frida Kahlo's house with these deep orange and, and green, these wonderful colors. And the decorations are fun and festive. They remind me of Dios de los Muertos. And it's just colorful. And of course, you add the smell of the food to that and you're in another world. I love it. What is so amazing about it? Because other than being a mouthful to say, <laughs> um, it's clearly a mouthful of flavor. So yeah. what makes it so special? Oh my God. It's, first of all, it's a bounty of food. It is an incredible mix of flavors that come together so beautifully. You've got this beautiful piece of fish, this mahi-mahi seasoned with the acid, the savoriness, the seasoning, just perfect. Now, when you get the especial, you also get a second taco. And you think, why do I need a second taco? It's because of the texture and the flavor. So this wonderful crispy taco now encases the regular taco with the guacamole, with this generous, beautiful portion of fish. The flavors come together, the textures, the crispiness. It is outstanding. You are making me hungry. I just want you to know you are making me very, very hungry. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw Faith shaking her head and, and smiling when you were describing that second taco wrap. And tell me about your experience, Faith. The taco itself, it's layers upon layers. And having been to Mexico City and eaten tacos, I was thinking, mm -hmm. oh, these might be some little dainty tacos. I might, might as well get two or three. And that was uh, an interesting calculation on my part, because the first thing I thought in my head when we received the tacos was gigante <laughs> because they were so big with the fish and the guac and the pico and such an interesting and amazing and delicious texture flavor mix with the fresh and the hot and the cold 100% would love to be back there eating these tacos and, you know, maybe even like a little bit longer seeing if I could finish all three. <laughs> oh yes. I 100% agree with what everyone said so far. And what I liked about the fish taco was it had like a perfect grill, a perfect sear on the outside, but was tender on the inside. And it did pair very, very well with all of the different fresh ingredients. Like they've got the guacamole and I'm very picky about guacamole and I thought it was excellent. And um, they wrap it in a nice little paper wrap for you with a little, almost like a little handle because it can get a little messy, right? You got all these juices <laughs> and flavors and it might drip out the back. So they thought of everything. It's ingenious and it was very hearty, very filling and it was totally worth it. Okay, everybody say together with me, la calaca loca. Go. La calaca loca. <laughs> Yes. So if you would like to try the Pescado Taco, a special at La Calaca Loca, it's on Telegraph Avenue in Oakland. And Chip's pro tip, don't forget to order it crispy Calaca Loca, a special style. Next up, Rachel's go-to appetizer. It's a strictly off-the-menu item that's gained quite a following with Napa Valley locals in the know. Intrigued? Just tell the waiter you want the hand-pulled mozzarella at St. Helena's Brasswood Bar and Kitchen.
at the Brasswood Estate, I always want our guests to feel at home. We are a winery vineyard estate that is about 53 acres and we have 17,000 square foot of caves, a production that we create our Brasswood wine. Our executive chef, Chef David Nuno, has been cooking in the valley for over 35 years. What I love about his style of cooking is that our food is paired for wine. He really has hit a home run with all the dishes and they go with every wine that is produced out here. We also have a working garden on our property right behind us that we grow all of our edible flowers, our rosemaries, our artichokes, our peppers. Anything that the chef or the pastry chef or even the bartender wants, we will grow it. The beauty of the hand-pulled mozzarella is that it is a secret dish that is not on our menu and everyone enjoys it. Not only the guests that come in, the locals, but also us. We probably have it at least twice a week. It's an amazing dish that starts with the curd and once the chef gets the order from the table, that's when they start pulling it. There we go. One of the things very important on the uh, mozzarella when you make it uh, a la minute, fresh, is uh, something very simple, but it's also a little tricky that uh, if you overwork it, it's not gonna come up right. You're gonna have like plastic. So it's very simple, but it has its own mind. Here we go, mozzarella is ready. The handful mozzarella is loved by so many people because of the freshness of it as it hits the table. It has grilled bruschetta that it sits on, olive oil, rosemary, sea salt, and it's just melts in your mouth. I get so many calls of people wanting to come just for this dish. Little did we know that everyone was gonna find out about it, and we go through almost 500 pounds a week of curd, and now we have secret cocktails, we have secret wine, and other secret fun bakery items. It's pretty amazing. So Rachel, this is a destination spot, certainly. How did you discover it? And how did you get in the know to find that off menu item? When I kind of first moved out to Napa and my best friend Lexi's mother, she was living out there and she said, hey, you like food and wine? Let's go catch a drink at the bar at Brasswood. And so we, we go there, we sit at the spacious bar that's there that, right as you walk in. And while we were sitting there, she said, you know, have you tried this off menu item here of this pulled mozzarella? It's over these little crostinis. I said, no, but who doesn't like cheese and bread? So let's go ahead and order it, right? And <laughs> the bartender comes up and he's bringing all these plates and, and ingredients. And I'm thinking, well, I wonder what he's doing with this. It's just bread and cheese, right? He brings out these uh, four sliced pieces of a grilled French baguette. It's already kind of got this spread of garlic on it. And right in front of us, he takes this square piece of mozzarella warm cheese and pulls it apart, lays them on top of each piece of bread. He's drizzling the olive oil. He's sprinkling the sea salt. He's cracking the pepper. And then he puts this little sprig of rosemary, you know, just for fun. And, and I was just floored. I was like, just for this appetizer? This is wild. Yeah. And then the drink I really like, I always get it every time I go, is the cucumber patch. And that's cucumber vodka. It's got cucumber bitters, it's got lime, and then it's got soda water. And it's one of those dangerous drinks where you can drink 10 of them and not really realize what's in it, right? So I always tell people, just start with two or three and then see how you go, right? I like um, that, start with two or three. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yep. I mean, I guess I should say stop at two or three and then see how it goes. There we go. That's a better answer from an attorney. There, you there go. we go. Chip, what was your experience when you went and you did the whisper to, I'm in the know, I want the, <laughs> the pulled mozzarella? Well, we were about to order. We had a, a, an array of appetizers. And before I could move on to our entrees, the waiter said, you know, I think you might like something. And he said, this is something, it's off menu, but it's called the pulled mozzarella. <laughs> and I looked at him thinking, that's exactly what I need to eat. And, and so you don't have to be a cheese aficionado to love this dish. Beautiful garlic bread, a fresh, beautiful homemade piece of cheese and the olive oil, the seasoning. I was amazed. I wish I'd ordered two of them. I really do because that was absolutely outstanding. Faith, did you enjoy the mozzarella dish? I did. I really loved 
uh, the freshness of the cheese. I loved that, you know, we bit in and you got that nice little, really satisfying, tiny little squeak when you're eating it, like you get from a really fresh cheese. And you have to eat them quickly. These are not things that sit around and do well as you, you know, nibble throughout your meal. You get your face in the cheese right there, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And I think it's definitely worth saying that you get all those flavors together and then you start looking back to the plate, like, so how many pieces am I getting? Because I could eat this for my whole meal, you know? So <laughs> It was definitely a really delicious dish for me, especially because I'd kind of forgotten how far away Napa is from where I live. So we were kind of running late. And as we were driving and we're trying to get through all the traffic, I'm just like, gotta get the cheese, gotta get the cheese. Yeah. <laughs> so overall, just like a really enjoyable experience. And this is also a destination, of course, for wine. Oh yes. So even that morning when I went up to go try the food again, we went wine tasting right there on the property. It was amazing. They have a little bit of everything there. Did you have anything else? Yes. They have a butterscotch panna cotta, which for every birthday we've ever gone there for, um, we always would order it. And it comes in sort of a martini shaped glass and the panna cotta has between a yogurt and a custard kind of firmness. And then they put this nice thick layer of the butterscotch, almost like a caramel sauce on it. And they put a dollop of the creme fraiche and this black sea salt. So you get the sweet and the savory and it's all together. It's just such a like, beautiful combination of flavors for your taste buds. And so that's a definite recommendation for me, for sure. Well, it sounds like you all enjoyed the spot, certainly, and, and the dishes. So if you would like to try the pulled mozzarella and more at Brasswood Barn Kitchen, it's located off Highway 29, just north of St. Helena. Rachel's insider tip, of course, get the butterscotch panna cotta for dessert. And now a little detour along the culinary road less traveled. Producer Cecilia Phillips has found some more Bay Area dishes you've got to try. We're here at the Alamany Farmer's Market. Tell me what makes this particular market so special. Well, uh, it's known as the People's Market. It's been around here for almost 80 years. It's the oldest farmer's market in California. It's a great place for people to come buy some fresh produce. Thank you so much, Ellen. Take care. Talk to the farmers and do some outdoor dining. Cheers. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so what do you have here? What's going on? We sell bivalves, which are shellfish, mainly oysters. What, what is this, the Miyagi? This is the small Miyagi. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. All right, I do like raw oysters, so oh, this, should, this should be good, but not usually at 7.30 in the morning. <laughs> cheers. cheers. Enjoy. Pretty good. Wow, that is so fresh. I've got fresh spun honey. The bees get a little bit dizzy, but it sure is yummy. I love the market. I've That's been awesome. coming here for 40 years. I grew up in this market, and it was very common for people to be very expressive. We got peaches, nectarine, plums. And let people know what they had. Pennywood, two for one dollar. This is called Pennywood, and Chinese, they call it Ban Tai Lun. They use this to make juice, or they can make soup with shrimp. So can you, you can eat it raw? You can eat them raw. So it's health for diabetes, high blood pressure, this kind of like an Asian medicine. So what makes your corn so special? Why do people keep coming back? Uh, we've been growing corn since the 40s, so we collect our own seeds, which is really good. Ooh. Oh my gosh. Very good. Well, look at this. Doesn't get much fresher. Okay. Wow. It's amazing. <laughs> it's, amazing though. it's like dessert. It is very good. This is the like most interesting flavor I've ever had. What's the name of this? Uh, finger lime. And you use your teeth, you squeeze out what's inside, and it's like the caviar of the lime world. Wow. Isn't that cool? Real neat mouthfeel. Oh my gosh. This one is a tree oyster. Tree oyster mushroom jerky, amazing. Okay, so the texture immediately feels like jerky. It's Looks like jerky. Like jerky. Yeah. Okay. Are you kidding me? If you blindfolded me and didn't tell me, Yep, this tastes exactly. like meat jerky. They heard a beautiful name because it's a heirloom shiroki. Heirloom shiroki. But I love how different they are. Like, look at yes. this. All the customers, all people that come by them and see them, they call them ugly tomatoes because they are ugly. <laughs> ugly tomatoes. Well, I think they're beautiful. I have one last question for you. This is a question that we are asking everybody today at the market. So if you were 
randomly caught in a cafeteria style food fight and you had access to any food, what food would you be fighting with? Wow, I would say tomatoes. Oh gosh, probably tomatoes. You could be like gentle with like a cherry tomato or aggressive with like a heirloom tomato. Ooh, it's gotta be a tomato. Cooked spinach in a spoon and rocket it across at my target. Gravy or mashed potatoes, I guess. It's heavy, it's flexible, and it's got some weight, and it gathers some velocity. It's a lot of mess, so I mean, might as well, right? If you're gonna do it like a food fight. I think giant marshmallows, because you could throw them well, but they wouldn't hurt. Tapioca. <laughs> I'd probably eat a lot of it, too. <laughs> Spaghetti, because it makes the most mess. Tomatoes can get pretty squishy and gross. Yeah. Tomato seems to be the overall answer today, so. Yeah, it's a good one. It's gonna make a nice splat. So that's our show. I have to say thanks to my wonderful guests. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I'll see you next time on Check Please, You've Gotta Try This. Cheers. 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 Which of these dishes would you try? Follow us on Instagram or like us on Facebook and let us know what you think. Check Please You Gotta Try This is made possible by the members of KQED and by the following sponsors whom we gratefully acknowledge for their steadfast support during these uncertain times. The Bay Area Airport that's close and reliable. iFlyOAK.com Total Wine & More, offering more than 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and over 4,000 spirits. Total Wine & More, now with nine Bay Area locations. TotalWine.com. It's our food rescue program that feeds people, not landfills. It's a thousand things, big and small. Sutter Health. Cooking is the first kind of love you know. It was starting when I was a child, with my grandmother doing fresh pasta, and now I transmit it to all the guests. It's something made specially for them. Oceana Cruises, proud sponsor of Check Please Bay Area. What do you marinate it in? I marinate it with special sauce. Secret sauce. Secret sauce, yes. This is the purple haze carrot. It's purple on the outside and it's orange in the middle. Would you like to try one? Yes, thank you. <laughs> Thought you'd never ask. <laughs>